from the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Allah. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Allah. For this wonderful day that you have given to us, Allah. Thank you, Allah, for this wonderful time. That we have gathered over here to spend with your word. Lord, we believe that whatever we do is blessed. Blessed by your strength. Blessed by your grace. Blessed by your mercy. Lord Jesus, we believe that it is nothing of us, but it is everything of you. It is everything of your word, O Lord. Help us, O Lord, that in whatever we do, whatever we touch, whatever we speak, is not by our own strength, but it is by your strength and it is by your grace that has been put in me. We thank you, O Lord. We believe and we receive it, O Lord. Glorify you for the truth. In the mighty and glorious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Okay, praise God. So, let's go to the scriptures. Okay. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 4, verse number. Hebrews chapter 4, verse number 3. We were learning the scripture yesterday, but we'll go back to that scripture. Praise the Lord. Okay, Hebrews 4, verse number 3. Okay, so see this. Okay. So, for we which have believed <clears throat> do enter into rest as he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. Okay. Now, the, the Israelites, they found this gospel. This gospel was preached to them, but they did not believe it. Without faith, I cannot receive what God has already given to me. Because without faith, I cannot enter into rest. And what is rest? Rest is the place where God has given to me everything. So if I don't have faith, I cannot receive what God has given because I cannot enter into the place called rest. Now the problem with these Israelites was that they were having a lack of faith. They were not living by faith. They were having a lack of faith. Their faith was not strong based on the word. Now, how do we get this faith? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. See, this faith cannot grow over, over one day or in one day or in one uh, night. No. There is time. And this faith can only come by hearing and hearing by the word. Now, we, as we already have seen this before, there are two types of hearing. The external hearing, the internal hearing. For an example, the woman with the issue of blood, she heard externally that somebody came and said to her that Jesus has come. And internally, that if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be healed. Praise God. Okay, now, here he's saying, For we which have believed do enter into rest, as he said, I, as I have sworn in my rest, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works or finished from the foundation of the world. Now, this faith that, in, that, that helps me enter into rest can come only when I do the two hearing. Okay, because as we as I told you, there is two hearing, external, eternal. Now, let's say a person goes to the doctor. And the doctor gives him the diagnosis and says, you have this so-and-so problem. Now, how many times does the doctor Mention the problem.
for me. Thanks. Just one. But then after that, when he goes out of the doctor, he goes back home. Now, how many times is that word speaking to him? Again and again. If the doctor says, you have so and so sickness, and you're going to die after a few months. And he gives the name of the sickness. Now, the name of the sickness will be running in their mind 24 by 7. That is the internal hearing. They heard externally from the doctor. And now they're focusing on it internally. Where they're again and again saying, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. What my family would do. What my brother and sister would do. What, what this person would do. Praise God. But here we see the same for we which have believed. Do enter into rest. So in other words, he's saying the only way to enter into the place called rest is by no other way, but only when you begin to live by faith and only when you begin to understand God's word in such a way that now you're he hearing it externally as well as, as well as eternally. That's what he says over here. For we which have believed do enter into rest, as he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. In other, in other translation, what it says is, this rest was made available from the foundation of the world. But now the question is, am I going to make the decision to correspond my faith with God's word, believe in the truth, and begin to hear this word internally and externally? and enter into that place called this. Faith can never be built in one day. Let's say a person is going to uh, say, he, he went to a teaching. Okay, he went to a preaching where somebody was preaching to him. And he said, he goes back. And the doctor tells him, you need to go under a surgery. Now, if he's going to say, because I know the word, because by the wounds of Jesus, I mean, I'm not going to go to the doctor. I'm not going to take any medicine. I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to confess the word because I'm already healed. That's foolish. See, in the kingdom of God, doctors are not wrong. You know, some scriptures say that the doctors are given wisdom by God. The, doctor, the doctors were given not to tell you the answer to your situation, the doctor was only given to tell you your problem. To tell what is wrong. Because let's say there was no doctor, then we would have not known what is wrong. We would have not known the sickness. And that's why we would not be able to speak the word. But now, the doctors, see, the doctor did not create us. We depend on completely on the doctor. But when it is faith, okay, the doctor had not created us. Have they? No. Who created us? God created us. And so as it was God who created us, now today what I need to learn is that now I'm going to believe in faith. I'm going to build up my faith and I'm going to depend not on my own ability, not on my own strength, not on my own authority, but I'm going to depend on Christ, on the world. And that's why I'm saying, for we which have believed do rent into rest. Faith cannot be built in one day. Faith cannot be built in one day. Faith cannot be built in a few days because you were there for a few days listening to the word. No, faith can't be built fully. The more you study the word, the more you learn the word, the more you understand the word, you build more faith. Because this faith is developed the more time you spend with the truth. The faith does not come anywhere else. But unless I begin to keep my focus and attention on God's word. Always remember, it will always take time for our faith to be strong. Our faith will not be strong in one day or in one hour. It will take time, a lot of time, but it will never be built. You can, nobody can say, I don't need to study the word of God anymore because I believe in faith and my faith is completely strong. Nobody can say that because the more you study the word, the more you get stronger in faith. And the more you get stronger in faith will be the more you are able to experience that word manifest in your life. This word will only be able to manifest in our life when we begin to believe in faith in the gospel, when we begin 
to believe in faith, in the truth, and we correspond action to this faith. Praise God. The Israelites did not enjoy what God has given to them. Rather, they lived 40 years in the desert. The reason why they did not enjoy was because they did not have food. The reason why even though God has already blessed us, the reason why we don't experience the blessing is because we have not yet made that decision to operate by faith. Rather, we operate by our physical senses. To enter into rest, it is not by our physical senses. It is not based on what you see, hear, taste, smell. But to enter the rest, it is by the faith in the promise of God. Praise the Lord. Okay. The word preached. Okay, see this. Uh, verse number two, see that. The word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. That means, yes, the word was given to them. Yes, the gospel was preached. They had every opportunity to enter into that promised land, which was a symbolic representation of rest. They had everything given to them. They had the whole opportunity. They had the word. They have the truth. But because they did not yet believe in faith and because they did not yet receive what God has spoken, that was the reason why they were not able to enter into this. Praise the Lord. Okay, see that? Okay, we'll continue with verse number four. See that? For he spoke in a certain place. Or a, a, a certain place on the of the seventh day on this wise, and God did rest the seventh day from all his work. Now, as we already learned, God did not create man on the first day, but he created man on the last day because everything he needed was provided, and he rested means everything was given. Rest means by God's wisdom and God's foreknowledge, God created everything that man would need in this planet Earth. Rest is whatever man needs to live in this physical world, whatever the food they need, the water they need, the senses they need has already been given to them. See, the Old Testament was a shadow of the New Testament. But today we no longer have the Old Testament, we have the reality. Now, in the Old Testament, okay, you see the Israelites. On the seventh day of the seventh month of the seventh year, these Israelites do not work at all. Because they used to not work on this day because God would give them three times harvest in the sixth year. Three times harvest. Enough harvest for the sixth year. Enough harvest for the seventh year. And because they did not work in the seventh year, he even gave them harvest for the eighth year. That's how it was. Three types of harvest. Praise God. And God would provide them three times harvest in the sixth year. What is God saying to them? God is saying to them, I will provide for you that when this whole world is working struggling with their own strength, I am giving it to you freely because I am a God of rest. God is a God of rest. God is a God of peace. God is a God who knows what you need and he has already given you more than you need. He has given you more than you thought you needed. Everything has been given. See, God is not the God who hides something. He gives one thing, he doesn't give the other. God is a God who gives everything. And he gave everything to man. He even gave his own life to man. Why? Because he's a God of rest. He is a God of rest. That now this rest has been given to us where everything has been provided. And so these Israelites would not work at all. They would just rest because everything they needed was provided. Praise the Lord. See, what God was teaching them is, while this whole world is working and laboring to provide for three years, 
I'm giving you three times the harvest that you have enough, more than enough for the sixth year, more than enough for the seventh year, and more than enough even for the eighth year. Praise God. God is a God who is saying to us, do not work, do not labor. The only thing I want you to do is make a decision to believe. All that I want you to do is make a decision to believe. What God wants us to do is make a decision to believe in the truth, to accept Jesus as our Lord, God, Master, and Savior, to receive what God has spoken, and to live by it. But now what we need to do is renew our mind, change our thinking, start believing God's word, and start entering into the rest, and start living that life in the place of rest where everything has been provided. We have to now begin to change our thinking that now my thinking should be changed that I no longer need to work, but I need to enter into the rest. So does that mean, see, many people think when you say rest, rest means resting from work. No, resting means resting not from work, but resting in work. So you're resting while you're working. You are resting. And what is this work? which we are supposed to do. Not to try to please God because the Bible says it is impossible to please God without faith. So the works that we do is not to try to please God because when I do something, God is pleased. But the way we please God is by faith. The way we please God is by believing in Jesus, accepting him as our Lord, God, Master, and Savior. And when we believe in the scriptures, when we understand the identity of us in Christ Jesus, when we begin to believe in faith in what God has spoken, that's when I can enter into the place called rest. Hallelujah. Okay. Now, you know, today, we, uh, in the Old Covenant, there, there used to be something called a Sabbath. And the Sabbath was on the seventh day of the week, on the Sunday, uh, or Friday evening and Saturday morning, and sometimes, sometimes it's translated. They would not work at all. And they would not, they would just rest. They would not go to work. It was like a holiday for them. But in the kingdom of God, the Sabbath is actually a person. And you know who is this person? Jesus Christ. When you have Jesus in you, you have peace in you. You have the Sabbath living in you. And the Sabbath, please don't misunderstand and think, okay, the Sabbath is where I don't work. We have to work, but we are not working anymore to try to please God. We are working because I understand that God is pleased. In other words, I am not pleasing God so that God will look at me and say, okay, you work. So I love you, but I'm but I'm working because I understand that God is pleased. I understand His love for me, that He already died for me, and He said to me, "I have forgiven you, and I'm pleased with you." Because of that, because I've understood His love, it is His love that makes me work. Working is not wrong, but working to try to please God or try to make God happy is wrong because God is not dependent on your works. God was made happy. Okay, we are today saved and. Because we are saved, God was made happy 2,000 years ago because of what Jesus did, because of what he did. He is not pleased by what you, what you did. No. See, today we are working because all these years what we were doing is we were working by our strength. But now as we have received the Holy Ghost, we are no longer working by our own strength, but we are working by the strength of grace that has been given to me. Now I'm working no longer by my ability, but I'm working because I have understood the grace of God, and I begin to live the life by the grace of God. And Jesus, for he spoke in a certain place on the seventh day on this wise, and God did rest the seventh day from all his works. God rested on the seventh day from all his works. We are living in rest today, not by our strength, not by our ability, but because we have understood the grace, and because of this grace, when we believe in faith, 
we can receive from grace. Because as we see in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, he says, For by grace are you saved through faith. That grace is the place of rest. Because grace is what? Grace is the finished works of Jesus Christ. And this rest is what? This rest is where everything is provided. The finished works of Jesus Christ. So Jesus has done it all. It has been provided. How do I receive the grace? By faith. See, as you know, we see grace and faith. Some people go extreme grace. Some people go extreme faith. Those who go extreme grace think they don't have to work anymore and they just sit down and relax. The people who go extreme faith is thinking that they have to work, they have to work, they have to work. But let me tell you, we should be in a balance of grace and faith. If we want to enter into the place called rest, we need to be in the balance of grace and faith. Yes, I am working, but I'm not working to please God. I have understood the finished works of Jesus Christ. My work is to believe in the finished works of Jesus Christ. That is the balance. Because as I told you, grace is the finished works of Jesus Christ for me on the cross. So now I believe in faith and I get into this balance of grace and faith. Hallelujah. Jesus was always in risk. You see, when there were 5,000 people, more than 5,000 people, he didn't, he was not worried and he did not get all panicked. He just was in risk. When you see, uh, there were so many examples. For an example, he was sleeping in a boat when there was a storm going on. Why do you think, how do you think he was able to do that? Because he was in risk. When there was any storm or wind, he was in risk. When Jesus came walking on the water, was he fearful of drowning? No, he was in risk. But the reason why he was in risk was not because of anything else, but because he understood the love of the Father, that the Father is always with him. He received the grace of God and he believed in him. You see, the people in the Bible, they entered into rest because of the faith in Jesus' time. You see, I'm not talking about the Old Testament. I'm talking about the New Testament in Jesus' time. You know how we know that? Because Jesus always said, your faith is healing. Your faith has made you whole. Where is this healing? Where is this made whole? In the place called rest. But how did they enter into that place called rest? Jesus very clearly said, because of your faith. Jesus did not take the credit to himself and say, oh, it is because I am holy or because of me you live. No. He said, because of your faith, your faith has healed you. Your faith has made you whole. When the woman with the issue of blood, she entered into rest. And what was the rest for? The rest for her was, if I touch this garbage, I shall be made healed. And when she believed it and when she went out with faith, praise God, the supernatural was manifesting in her life in such an extent that she got to Jesus, even in that big crowd, she touched the garment of Jesus and there was complete healing in her body. And not only healing in the body, but the Bible says, Jesus said to her, you are made whole. You are healed every area of your life. You know why? Because this woman was not only suffering in the area of sickness, because the Bible says she was financially ill as well. She had spent all her money, all that she had had. She was financially sick, she was physically sick, she was probably mentally sick. You know why? Because at that time, these uh, people, okay, who had this type of issues, would not be able to go out and they were not able to live with their family. They had to live in uh, all alone by themselves, okay, and they were not allowed to go out. So there must have been so many mental issues because she's in that house, that home for so long. Or even there must have been mental issues for her if she wasn't worried and panic, saying, but the law is, if I go out and if they come to know that I have the issue of blood, they will stone me to death. That's what they used to do. They used to stone these people to death. If they, uh, death, if they found out they had come out or they had done something they were not supposed to do. She did not have any panic. She did not have any worry. She did not have any fear. Rather, she entered into the rest by her faith and she took possession of what God has spoken. The centurion, he came to Jesus and he said, don't come to my house. Just say the word 
and my servant shall be healed. What was that? That was the faith. And what did Jesus say? I have never seen faith in all of Israel. In other words, I have never seen so much faith in all of Israel with so a person has so much faith that he entered into the sense. Because we saw, right? The Israelites, they did not mix their faith. Every miracle that happened in the new covenant was because of the person's faith. Now you might be saying, well, Jesus spoke to them and prayed over them. Jesus prayed. But who, who came to Jesus? They came to Jesus or Jesus went to them? They came to Jesus. Jairus came to Jesus. That man who was on the bed was carried by his four friends to Jesus. The woman with the issue of blood came to Jesus. That was their faith. They came to Jesus and as they came to Jesus, they experienced rest because the Sabbath is Jesus and Jesus was the rest. That everything they need was provided through him. You know, many a times in the scripture you see it mentions about Peter, James and John. And these are the three disciples that is mentioned. For an example, in the transfiguration, why did he not say somebody else? Why did he only say Peter, James, and John? When he went to Jairus' house and when he went to the daughter, he took with him Peter, James, and John. When uh, when they were going in Acts, when they were going into the temple and there was this lame man at the gate of the temple, it was Peter and John. Why was it only these three disciples, Peter, James, and John? Why was it not uh, somebody else like Matthew or Bartholomew or somebody else. Why was it only Peter, James, and John? Because these disciples were the disciples who had experienced the rest more than anybody else because they were living with Jesus. They said, I am never going to depart from you, Jesus. I'm always going to live with you because when I live with you, I experience something that is much more greater than I experience without you. It should be our condition. We have to be strong in the word. We have to renew our mind. We have to come to the word and receive. See, God is saying, I've given it all to you. We are praying, saying, Lord, give, Lord, give. God is saying, I've given, I've given. Just believe in faith. Just enter into the rest and just receive what I've given. But the only way to receive what God has given is when I enter into rest. The only way to enter into rest is when I believe. Praise God. You know, when you are worried, that means you're not, you, you have not yet entered into rest. And we will see more on this worry. Worry is an indication of unbelief. So in other words, unbelief is the reason why you have not entered into rest. And there are many scriptures that say this. You will see it. Praise God. Okay, so did you understand any questions, any doubts? Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Okay, thank you, Jesus. Praise God. So today we'll pray for all those people who have um, any type of, type of pain in their joints, that when they move their joints, their pain, and so they stiffen, they, they stay stiff because they don't want the pain, and that's when, you know, the joints are not able to move now like they used to because of that pain. We pray for those people. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, the Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Lord, according to your word, you said that every type of sickness is demonic. And so, Lord, I believe and I receive your word. I glorify you for the truth. And Lord, as your word has given me the authority to speak to the mountain, I speak to every spirit of sickness that is coming against the joints. I have brought you. I curse you and I cast you out in Jesus' name. I lose complete healing, deliverance in Jesus' name. I command complete restoration in the whole body in Jesus' name. I command that there is complete healing, complete deliverance. And he's and whoever is suffering with this Lord, their joints are healthy and speak to your joints. Be loose, be relaxed, be healed, be lubricated, be Without pain in Jesus' name, I believe that they are able to move their joints like they were able to move. Lord, I believe it and I receive it and I glorify you, Lord, in the mighty and glorious name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Okay. Amen.
Amen. Okay, we'll continue with the Thanksgiving prayer. Would anyone like to do the Thanksgiving prayer? Okay. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus, we thank you and we praise you, Father, for teaching us. Lord, we thank you for how good you are. We thank you, Lord, for your love for us. We thank you, Lord, for your mercy for us. We thank you, Lord, for your compassion for us, O Lord. We believe, Lord, that it is because of your love, it is because of your mercy, and it is because of your grace, we are completely set free, O Lord. Lord, we thank you and we praise you, Father, for the truth. We believe, O Lord, that it is because of the truth, it is because of the word, it is because of the gospel, we are set free in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you and we praise you and we glorify you. We thank you, Lord, for teaching us and revealing to us your word. We believe, Lord, that it is because of you, it is because of your love, it is because of your forgiveness, we are able to walk by faith in the victory that you have promised for us, to live the life by faith in the truth. Lord, we thank you and we praise you and we glorify you, Lord, for the word we believe and we receive your word. We glorify you. In the mighty and glorious name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Okay, we'll pray in tongues. Thank you, Jesus. Holo bahane na hala bana bahara baha kala shilale. Hela bahala baholo bahane na hukolo shilala haraba. Ukuru shilala hukolo shikala. Ukuru bahana na hukolo shikala hukuru. 